My name is Jared Nicholson. I'm the mayor of Lynn. I'd like to welcome you all here to the city and particularly welcome uh, Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, Secretary Augustus, uh, the representatives and leaders from so many communities around the Commonwealth who have come together to discuss this critically important issue. It is certainly one that we feel deeply here in the city of Lynn. Almost half of our households are cost burdened and half of those are severely cost burdened. So paying a majority of their income on housing costs. And it's one that we have prioritized trying to address. We recognize that the, the current crisis is a, the result of some recent market forces as well as longstanding factors of, of disinvestment and, and discrimination. And it is uh, forcing our residents out of their homes in some cases and putting many at risk. It's making it harder for families to, to get their start, questioning whether they ever will be able to get their start. It's con causing concern for employers who are worried about being able to recruit and retain employees. And so it's one that we have centered and we've committed ourselves to a vision of inclusive growth, trying to support in positive growth that includes all of us and benefits the whole community. And we recognize that we have some momentum here in the city of Lynn. And in order to maintain that, we have to continue to be able to welcome investment as well as make sure that our residents see how it can benefit them. So we try to take proactive steps in, in support of that goal, streamlining our development process to make things easier, making policy decisions that prioritize that positive growth as well as affordability, making smart infrastructure investments with city funds and with a lot of support from our friends and partners at the state, as well as strong planning. We implemented the city's first ever comprehensive plan recently and are rewriting our zoning ordinance to meet that plan with a lot of community input based on uh, support from a state grant that's allowing us to do that. And we're starting to see some results. We have 2,500 units in the pipeline currently under construction and 15% of those are affordable. So we're excited with that momentum and just so excited to have a partner in the Healy Driscoll administration that's helping us do that. I'm so grateful for the governor's uh, solidarity in, in addressing the, the urgency of the housing crisis, her incredible leadership on this issue around the Commonwealth, and, and particularly uh, her and her team's support of the work that we're doing here in Lenin. So it was my honor to, to introduce Governor Healy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mayor Nicholson, for hosting us in Lynn today. It's great to be here with you, with Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll, our Secretary of Housing and Livable Communities at Augustus, and wonderful for all of us to be joined by so many mayors, city managers, town managers, town administrators from across Massachusetts. Today we kick off a week where we're talking about housing all the time, every day, because, look, we know that it's the number one issue facing our state. We know that cities and towns are also where the rubber meets the road on this issue. And we just had a substantive discussion just a, a short while ago about how high housing costs are impacting our local residents, our local economies, and our local governments. We also talked about solutions and some things that we can and must be doing. We want to support these efforts, and in many cases we already are. I've said it many times, and it's clear again today, that the need for more housing is a challenge to our economy and to our competitiveness. It's a challenge to our public health and our quality of life. Housing is the single biggest challenge facing Massachusetts. It's the issue we must address and address urgently, urgently and quickly. That's why we're working together through the MBTA Communities Law, why we're uh, proposing historic levels of funding through the Affordable Homes Act, and why we're just so committed to doing everything that we can across the state to increase housing production. I want to celebrate today the fact that over 40 cities and towns have already passed zoning plans intending to comply with the MBTA Communities Act. Today and every day, we will continue to work together to build the homes and the communities that our residents need. I once again am grateful to these leaders for their continued partnership, and I now turn it over to our uh, terrific Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll, who has been out there advocating for this from day one. Thank you, Governor. It's terrific to be here in Lynn uh, talking about the issues that matter most in people's lives. And we know that whenever 
We are anywhere in any community. That's from the Berkshires to Boston, from the Cape to Merrimack Valley, to the heart of the Commonwealth in Central Mass. The number one issue on people's mind is housing, and that's housing in general. It means we don't have enough market rate homes for people who want to purchase a home. It means we don't have enough homes for folks who want to rent a, an apartment or a home. Not enough home, homes for the folks who are working hard every day. Think about anyone who's pouring coffee or pouring beer for a living. Someone who's helping take care of your child who you might drop them off to in the morning. Individuals helping take care of older adults or relatives. Nobody can keep up with these fast rising rents. And the lack of housing is impacting all of our communities across the Commonwealth. It's hurting our economy, it's hurting our workforce, and that means it's hurting our state. And the truth of the matter is, the largest outmigration we're seeing isn't seniors leaving to go to the Sunshine State, it's 26 to 34 year olds moving out of the Commonwealth just because they can't afford a reasonable place to stay. That's a concern. It's a big chunk of our workforce. It's hurting the fabric of our communities, and that's not what Massachusetts is about. So this administration, the work that we're doing collectively on the ground, because we don't build housing as a state. It happens in communities. We're just done admiring the problem. We have got to lean in and act, and we're getting to work in partnership with the local leaders who are here and so many more across the Commonwealth aimed at fixing this, aimed at addressing this housing crisis. And it's great to be here to talk about the solutions we have on the table and how we can continue together to build the type of housing we need in this Commonwealth for everyone, for everyone. Solving big problems is what we do in Massachusetts. We're not really good at kicking the can down the road, at least this administration. This is absolutely a solvable problem if we all work together. And we're grateful for the continued and constant support that we have from members of our local communities. And we're looking to continue that partnership as we move forward uh, addressing these housing needs head on. One of the best ways for us to do that is certainly by having a cabinet dedicated to addressing housing demand at all levels. Uh, one of the first acts that we had in our new administration recognizing the housing challenges was uh, identifying an individual who could serve as our cabinet secretary who understood what housing meant in community and what it meant to actually pencil out deals and get housing done. So I'm pleased to introduce our housing and livable community secretary, Ed Augustus. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Uh, it's an honor to be here with the Lieutenant Governor uh, and the Governor who both have championed housing and prioritized housing. Uh, not only in creating the Secretariat, but by proposing the Affordable Homes Act, uh, which is the largest, most significant housing bill in the history of the Commonwealth. I want to thank Mayor Nicholson for his leadership and for his innovation uh, in the housing space, and thank the Lynn Housing Authority for hosting us today. Uh, I'm proud to stand with our partners uh, from communities across Massachusetts who are working hand in hand with us to confront the housing challenges we face. Uh, we heard so many innovative ideas uh, in that conversation uh, just now across Massachusetts. Uh, folks on the ground who are figuring out how to deal with the housing crisis uh, in partnership with the Commonwealth. And we got a lot of great suggestions that hopefully we can share with other communities. From the outset, the Healy Driscoll administration has made uh, working closely with our communities a priority. The state can't do this alone. No community can do this alone. But we but what we can do together will be extraordinary. I'm inspired by the en energy and ingenuity here today. Access to housing is not a Massachusetts only problem, but we are going to lead our way in solving it. I believe that and the people here believe that. Each one of these individuals knows firsthand how the lack of housing is impacting their communities. From the DPW workers to the people who keep our businesses uh, running in cities and towns across the state. This is an existential threat that our cities and towns can feel in their bones. But the community leaders here today are standi standing united in purpose. Through innovations like the MBTA Communities Law and the Affordable Homes Act, we can work in concert to give our communities the tools to remove roadblock roadblocks to success. And the work doesn't stop here. The administration is also hard at work building the state's first ever five-year housing plan with input from folks across the Commonwealth. Uh, together we can build a Massachusetts where everyone from the barista to the banker can afford to live. Uh, with that, I would like to introduce a great partner uh, on the Affordable Homes Act, 
uh, Adam Chapdelaine, the Executive Director of the Mass Municipal Association. Good afternoon, and thank you, Mr. Secretary. My name is Adam Chapdelaine, Executive Director and CEO of the Massachusetts Municipal Association, which proudly represents all cities and towns in the Commonwealth. And I'm proud to be here today with the Healy Driscoll Administration and so many local leaders from across Massachusetts to discuss the importance of local housing solutions. These local officials here are just an example of the dedicated municipal officials driving and implementing local housing policy in every corner of the Commonwealth. We want to thank the administration for their partnership in this work, understanding that housing affordability is a top priority for all of us. And while we may not always agree on every policy proposal, these local officials know what has been successful. Housing policy works when you align resources and policies to support local housing initiatives and empower communities as vital partners in this effort. And that's why we're so grateful for the framework of the Governor's Affordable Homes Act. The Governor and her administration deserve important credit for going big and going bold. The bill includes $4 billion proposed for bond authorizations, all of which will be critical to address the significant challenges we face related to housing affordability in the Commonwealth. And for local housing goals, it's often about the available tools. In included in the HR, excuse me, AHA, we have the Housing Works Funding Program. We have funding for rehab and preservation. We have the local option transfer fee. And we have inclusionary zoning, all of which are critical tools to help local government meet this challenge. Every community in the Commonwealth feels the impact of this overwhelming need for affordable housing. But we also know that true progress in making housing more affordable can only be achieved when the state and municipalities are working together. The MMA is committed to working with the administration and the legislature on ways to propel this bold scope while providing needed flexibility to support municipalities in meeting their local housing goals. So thank you again for including me today. And now I'll introduce my friend and colleague, the Executive Director of the Metropolitan Area Planning Council, Mark Drayson. Anna. <clears throat> Adam, thank you very much, and thanks to the Governor, Lieutenant Governor, and Secretary for being here today. Thanks to Mayor Nicholson for hosting us. Uh, my name is Mark Drayson. I run the Metropolitan Area Planning Council, which is the regional land use planning agency for Greater Boston. Uh, I, I now work at MAPC, so I work on lots of planning issues, but I have devoted the 40 years of my career to affordable housing. That's sort of the cause of my life. Uh, in order to deal with the crisis we have before us today, we have to walk and chew gum at the same time. We have to do two things. We have to expand the supply of market rate housing, and we have to pay attention to preserving and developing new affordable housing. The reason that the Affordable Homes Act, passing the Affordable Homes Act, is the single most important thing we can do in Massachusetts today to address the housing crisis is because it recognizes both of these critical things. It includes critical policy recommendations, like allowing accessory dwelling units by right, so that people can build an extra unit on their house for their kids, for their parents, for local students, for other people to be able to rent, provide themselves with some income, and create another home. That's a, an example of the many market rate solutions in the Affordable Homes Act. It also provides, as the Secretary said, over $4 billion during five years to preserve and create affordable homes. It has new provisions on inclusionary zoning, on a real estate transfer fee, so many other things that will expand and preserve the supply of affordable housing. I'll close by saying what I said before, which is the single most important thing we can all do is to encourage the passage of the Affordable Homes Act. And if we do so, we will, we will have a series of important new tools to be able to address this crisis. It will still take us some years to get through it, but we'll be firmly on the road. And with that, it's my honor to bring back to the podium Governor Healy. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. And on behalf of the Lieutenant Governor and myself, we want to thank all of today's speakers and importantly, all of the folks who sat with us at the roundtable to help think through 
new solutions and new ideas. Um, that brings us to a close. We're happy to take any questions on topic, if there are any. Terrific. Okay, have a good afternoon, everyone.